this video and a couple of three others talking about uh, what's usually taught in finance but is very relevant to economics, the time value of money. Money has value based on, in part, when do you have it or when you don't. Simple example. If I offered you $100 and I will either give it to you today or I'll give it to you a year from now, which would you prefer? And the answer is you should want it today so that over the course of the following year, you could put that money to work and earn some sort of return on it, some sort of interest rate on it. So money, the same amount received today, is worth more than the amount received in the future. That's the general area within which we're going to talk. We're going to talk about two types of calculations with the time value of money. We're going to talk about a single amount of money viewed today versus the future, what we call a lump sum calculation. And then we're going to talk about a series of payments received over time so that I maybe gave you $100 a month for a year. What would, be that, what would that be worth a year from now, assuming that you could be earning interest with that money, that sort of thing. So we're going to say lump sum calculations, and then the payments we're going to call annuities, a calculation with annuities rel relative to the time value of money. So let's start out with the, uh, the lump sum calculations, and I'm going to do this without using the tables. I'm going to use a financial calculator. In my case, I've got a Texas Instruments Business Analyst too. Uh, a financial calculator, you'll be able to identify it will have the following functions or buttons on it. You'll be able to calculate present values, future value, uh, in the number of periods of time over which you're, you're looking, uh, the interest rate that's applicable to the calculation, and in the case of annuities, the amount of the annuity or the payment. So you'd be looking for a financial calculator with these sorts of buttons on it or functions. And again, I'm using the Texas Instruments Business Analyst Two. About $30 around here, uh, pretty cheap. You'll be able to use it the rest of your life. You can figure loan payments, car payments, mortgage payments, as well as investment calculations. All right, that's where we're going. All right, let's take an example. Lump sum calculations. Lump sum. A single amount of money. Suppose I said... I'll give you $100 today. So its present value today is $100. And we'll put that in the bank for a period of five years. So the N, the number of compounding periods over which we're going to earn interest, is five. Let's say that the bank is going to pay us interest at 3%. We'll just use the whole number, 3. We want to know how much will that $100 grow to become over the course of five years, earning 3% per year, recognizing that the money compounds on itself. That the interest earned at the end of the first year is then the principal that earns interest in the second year, and so forth. In other words, what we want to calculate is the future value of this $100. And I'm going to throw a little apostrophe up here. This means calculate the future value. So that's the kind of calculation we're going to be doing. Now, with the business analyst, too, a couple of things before you start. You've got to make sure that before you start any calculations, you clear the memory register so that all of these memory registers for these variables are zeroed out, that you don't have numbers in there from before. In this case, uh, I'm going to hit uh, second clear TVM. Uh, I'll trust you to find out how to do that with whatever calculator you're using. The second thing is to recognize, at least with the Texas Instruments, is that the present value or the future value, one or the other, must be entered as a negative number. It doesn't matter which one, but imagine I'm going to take $100 out of my pocket so it's a negative flow. So I'm going to say the present value is a negative 100, then I'm going to put these other numbers in and calculate future value, and it will come out as a positive number. So let's do the calculation real quick. I've got $100 negative to present value. I've got 5 and then enter N. Then I've got 3, press 3, and then press I slash Y, the interest rate per year. 
and then I'm going to use the compute button, CPT, up at the top left corner of the, of the, compute, of the calculator, compute the future value. And what I get here for future value on my calculator is $115 and oh, about 93 cents. Okay? So if I put that $100 in the bank, I leave it there for five years earning 3%, it will grow to become $115.93. I knew the present value, I wanted to learn the future value. Pretty straightforward calculation. We'll see some more of those as we go along. What I want to do next, though, is turn this around. Let's take a different example and say, look, you're going to get $500 in the future. So that's the future value. Let's put that over here. Future value is $500. Given that you're going to have to wait for six years before you receive it, and given that what that money could be doing is earning an interest rate of 4% per year. I'm making these numbers up, right? What is that $500 worth today? What is the present value of that $500? And again, it's just a process of entering these numbers into the right registers, into the right buttons, and calculating the, the solution. It's a whole lot easier than using those cards and tables and such as that. And uh, the cost of a financial calculator, generally speaking, is pretty cheap. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to change the future value to $500. If I didn't, if I left it positive, I'd have a negative answer down here. The positive and negative doesn't matter, as long as you understand what you're calculating. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to use my calculator. And I'm going to say second clear TVM, clear the, t the time value of money registers. Get all the old numbers out of the registers. Then I'm ready to input my data. I've got $500. I'm going to make it a negative. I'm going to, I'm going to push future value. So I have $500 in future value, uh, six for N, four for interest per year. I've loaded the registers. Now I want to calculate or compute CPT the present value. And in this case, I get $395 and, oh, let's say 16 cents, rounding off. What does this tell us? Equivalently, what it's saying is that if you had $395 today and you put it in the bank for six years earning 4%, it would grow to become $500. So what is the present value? of $500 to be received at some point in the future, assuming some basic interest rate or what's sometimes called the discount rate. At what rate would you discount that amount, that $500? So the basics of lump sum calculations are calculating either the future value or the present value, given that you know the other information. Okay? Now, we can play games with this, if you like. We might know the future value and the present value, and the time period, and we might want to calculate the interest rate. Let's try that just for a second. Suppose I said, I've got $300 today, and I'm going to leave it in the bank for six years, and I want it to grow to $500. What interest rate would I have to earn? And so I can load the calculator. I'm going to go back through here and clear the memory registers just as a good habit. Before every calculation, I want to clear those memory registers. I'm going to put negative uh, 500 for future value. I'm going to put 300 for present value. I'm going to put 6 for in. And then I'm going to ask the, the calculator to compute the interest rate. CPT, IY. And the interest rate here is 8, hello, 8.5. Say 8.9%. Okay? I would have to earn 8.89, almost 8.9%, for my $300 to grow to $500 in six years, assuming it compounds annually. Those are the basics for the lump sum calculation.